Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the x and y intercepts of a rational function. Now to understand how to find the x and y intercepts of a rational function, I think it's important just to understand the x and y intercepts of any function. And let's kind of look at the most simplistic you know, function that we first started learning about x and y intercepts is a rational equation. So let's do you know, 2 thirds x minus 2. So if we were going to graph this, you know, we'd find our y intercept, which is at negative 2. And then we take our slope up to over 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay? And then so we'd have a nice little line like this. So therefore we have our y, I'm sorry, our y intercept, and we have our x intercept. Now in this graph, it's obvious what our x and y intercept is, and that's what I want to do. I want to pick, I want to start with something that's obvious. This point is 3, comma 0. This point is um, 0, comma, negative 2. So the important thing I want you to come from this is when we look at the y-intercept, the x value is 0. When we look at the x-intercept, the y value is 0. And that's really the most two important things that we're going to apply you know, with these functions. Here we're dealing with functions instead of like an equation. Uh, so we're replacing y with f of x. But still, we're going to be applying the same thing. When we're looking for the x-intercept, y equals 0. Or in this case, f of x equals 0. When we're looking for the y-intercept, x equals 0. And so you can see this works out here. If I wanted to find the x-intercept, I would replace y with 0, and I would solve. Well, add 2, add 2. 2 equals 2 thirds x, multiply by 3 halves, multiply by 3 halves, x equals 3. Right? If I wanted to find the y-intercept, all I'd do is I'd replace x with, with 0. And therefore, you get y equals negative 2. Again, finding the y value, finding the x value. All right. So that's really going to be what we're going to be doing for all these problems. We just have problems that aren't as simple as, as linear equations. But that's OK. The understanding is what's going to be the most important. So to find the y-intercept, the first thing I'm going to do is let's find the y-intercept first. Usually, that's typically the easiest. We are simply just going to set x equal to 0. And I'll write this down on the first one. All right, so to set y, so find a y-intercept, x is equal to 0. So therefore, I'm going to keep f of x, and I'm just going to do 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 2. So therefore, f of x equals, well, 0 plus 2 is just 2, so that equals, uh, well, I don't have room for that. So 2 over negative 2 is uh, just going to be negative 1. So therefore, the coordinate point is x is 0, y is negative 1. Now to find the x-intercept, I'm going to replace y equals 0. Okay? So I'll replace f of x represents the output value, which is the same as y. So I'll replace that with 0, and then I have x plus 2 over x minus 2. Now, to solve for x, we can't solve for x when we have an x in the denominator. So we have to get rid of that x minus 2 in the denominator. So to do that, we're going to multiply by an x minus 2 on both sides. So what happens here, x minus 2 in the denominator times x minus 2 in the numerator, that divides to 1 x minus 2 times 0 is going to go to 0. And this is really helpful, especially once we do this many problems, is we can see that there's going to be a pattern that's really going to start to emerge, which I'll go over here in a second. Then I can just solve. So therefore, x is equal to negative 2. So again, x equals negative 2, y equals 0. So that coordinate point is negative 2, comma, 0. All right? And that's basically going to be you know, our kind of operation here. Um, so let's go and do this again. All this. Uh, I'm just going to label them now, y-intercept. Instead of saying x equals 0, we should, that is just going to be implied. So therefore, I'm just going to do uh, f of x equals 2 over 0 cubed minus 0. Well, we have a kind of an issue here because f of x equals 2 over 0. And we cannot divide by 0. That's going to be undefined values. So therefore, the y-intercept uh, is none. There is no y-intercept. The graph, and that's OK. It's just saying the graph does not cross the y-axis. Now we look for the x-intercept. All right. Again, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to set f of x equal to 0. And then again, we're going to solve for x. But again, we can't have x in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by this whatever is in my denominator. So x cubed minus x, x cubed minus x. And therefore, again, what we notice here is 0 is equal to 2. Well, 0 does not equal 2. So that, again, tells us that there's no values x that actually um, help us cross the uh, x-axis. So again, 
In this example, there is also no. Now, it doesn't matter. Just because you have no y-intercepts doesn't mean you're always going to have no x-intercepts. It just happens in this case there is no x-intercepts or y-intercepts, which is kind of like the reciprocal function, um, as you can think of, which actually this, you know, if you were to factor out an x, you can get a version of that. All right, so now that we're going to get into some ones that have a little bit more degree of mathematics into them, let's start looking at some of the patterns. Um, when we plugged in 0, what we really realized is the y-intercept is really just the ratio of the terms that do not have an x in them. Because once you pl plug in an x, let's look over here. Once you plug in the x, your, your only left over is with the constants, right? Because everything else times 0 is going to be 0. So from now on, if I want to find the y-intercept, I'm just going to look for the numbers that don't have an x because anything with 0 is just going to go to 0. So I'm just going to look for the ratio here of the constants. As far as the x-intercept side, every single time I had to multiply by the denominator. And that's going to happen for all of these. You're going to set them equal to 0, and each one of these have an x in the denominator. So you're going to be multiplying by that denominator on both sides. So in reality, what we've noticed is we're really just taking the numerator and setting it equal to 0. So I don't want to just do this just to say, hey, here's the shortcut. But I want you to understand, I don't want to be making a video that's 40 minutes long when we can start understanding if we're going to be doing the same thing over and over, let's speed up the process a little bit and you know, make, the, make the process a little bit go by quicker so we can finish, you know, finish the work and not have to show everything step by step when it's not really necessary. So here, if I want to find the y-intercept, again, x is equal to 0. So that goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. All I'm really going to be left with is negative th or sorry, 3 over negative 7. Now remember, 3 over negative 7 is the same thing as negative 3 over 7. So therefore, my x or my y intercept is 0 comma negative 3 sevenths. For my x intercept, I would basically set this equal to 0. I'd multiply by my denominator on both sides. So I'd basically have 0 equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now here we're going to start doing a little bit of math. Um, so we've got to factor this. What two numbers multiply to give me negative 3 or positive 3 and um, add to give me negative 2? Well, there are no two numbers that multiply to give you negative. Um, there, are not two any, there are not any two numbers. So actually, what we need to do in this case is check to see if then, so we can't factor it, so it's not anything easily factorable. So now what we need to do is actually check um, using like the quadratic formula. So if I do a quickly my uh, discriminant, I do negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. What I notice here is I am going to have um, square root of 4 minus 12 which is going to equal the square root of negative 8. So therefore, in real numbers, we can't take the square root of a negative number under our real number system. So therefore, um, our x-intercepts in this case are going to be not real. So therefore, we're just going to say none. It doesn't make sense for us to talk about an intercept where it's not real, right? It's imaginary. So therefore, there is no x-intercepts in this case. So you can see it's not always going to happen. But you want to make sure, just because something is non-factorable, doesn't mean it couldn't be irrational intercepts as well. So using completing the square or using the quadratic formula would help you find irrational x-intercepts if that was the case. Um, all right, in the next one, let's go ahead and again speed this up. So if you guys notice, when I plug in 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, and then we're left with a negative 5. So the y-intercept is going to be left with um, f of x equals 0 over 5. Well, obviously, guys, x-intercept 0, 5 is just 0. So my y-intercept is 0, comma, 0. Um, if I want to find the x-intercept, again, basically what I'm doing is setting my uh, numerator equal to 0. So I have 0 equals x cubed minus 4x. So to solve this, I want to see if I can factor. I see I can factor out a, an x. So I left with 0 equals. Sorry. I can factor this further down. 0 equals x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. So this equation kind of looks pretty crazy, but what happens is there's actually going to be three, zero, uh, three x-intercepts here. It's going to be an x-intercept at 0, 0, which is the same as the y-intercept. 
And then you're also going to have x-intercepts at 2 and at negative 2. Because if you were to apply the zero product property, you could apply a zero product property, set them all equal to 0. But let's show you what these would look like. So my x-intercept is at 0, 0, 2, 0, and at negative 2, 0. Because 2 makes that whole equation true. And negative 2 makes that whole equation true, as well as 0 makes the whole equation true. So therefore, the x-intercept, there's actually three x-intercepts and only y, one y-intercept. All right, uh, in the next one, if we want to find the y-intercept, again, we're just going to plug 0 in for all of our terms. That goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. So therefore, we're left with equals negative 2 over 8, right? After we plug in everything 0, which can be reduced to a negative 1 fourth. Okay, again, it doesn't matter if the negative's up top or if it's in the bottom or if right in front, but our y-intercept is x equals 0, and that's going to be a negative 1 fourth. For the x-intercepts, we have another factoring uh, problem again. Again, we'd be multi we're setting our uh, uh, f of x equal to 0, multiplying the denominator on both sides. So basically, we have 0 equals oh, 2x squared plus x minus 2. All right, so in this equation, we basically we know we need to factor. We can't factor out a common term. Um, so therefore, I want to set this as two factors that are going to multiply to give me my first term, 2x and x. And I want to see what two numbers are going to multiply to give me 2, but then, uh, so I need to multiply to give me negative 2. So that's either negative 1 or um, negative 1, positive 2, and negative 1 and positive 2, or positive 2 and negative 1. And if I'm looking into multiplying those, it doesn't seem like that's going to give me my zeros. Um, so again, this wouldn't be a factor. You could do negative 1 and 2. But again, that looks like that's always going to add you up to give you a 0. So let's go ahead and check the discriminant here. Again, which is b squared minus 4 times a times c. So when I check the discriminant here, I have uh, 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. And what I get is 2 squared is going to be 2 squared is going to be 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Times negative 2 is going to be a positive 16. Ah, we have a irrational 0. So here, the discriminant was negative, so there's no real roots. Here, it's actually irrational. Now, we could simplify this, or we could just leave this as is. But to finish this off, we actually have to use uh, the rest of the quadratic format. I was just using the discriminant to determine that. So to actually borrow a little space over here, to do the rest of the quadratic formula, x equals um, opposite of b, so that's going to be negative 1, plus or minus the square root of your discriminant, all divided by 2 times a, which is 4. All right, so therefore, my x-intercepts are going to be x equals negative 1. And again, you could, leave, you could divide the 4 into both of these, negative 4 comma Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave them as that, <laughs> just to save myself a little bit of time. Um, we could write these. Actually, well, let's just use it. So x equals negative 1 fourth plus or minus the square root of 20 fourths. And those are going to be my x coordinates, and your y coordinate is going to be 0. So to, rather than writing them out separately, I could write, that's perfectly fine to write you know, your, x, your values of like so. You basically have negative 1 fourth plus or minus square root of 20 comma 4. So you have two points, negative 1 fourth plus the square root of 20 over 4. You could simplify that out for time purposes. I'm going to leave that non-simplified. And you could have negative 1 fourth comma square root of 20 over 4 comma 0. Now again, the purpose of this is these are irrational. So they're just not going to land at 1, 2, or 3. It's going to be irrational number where they cross. However, these are going to be your two points. All right, in the last one, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Again, if I want to find the x-intercept, I'm sorry, the y-intercept we always did first. So in finding the y-intercept, you're going to plug in 0 in for all these. That goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. You're left with f of x equals negative 16 over 4, which is equal to negative 4. So therefore, the y-intercept is going to be 0 comma negative 4. All right? And then to find the x-intercept, um, basically what we're going to do is set f of x uh, 0 to your numerator. So we'll say 0 equals x squared minus 16. 
I see that I could factor that down to x minus 4 times x plus 4. So therefore, I have two uh, intercepts. So my two solutions are plus or minus uh, 4. So my x-intercepts are going to be negative 4 comma 0 and 4 comma 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the x and the y-intercepts of a rational expression. Thanks.